Particles from the continuous rain of the organic debris in the reef waters are trapped in the delicate fronds, bound up in a sticky bundle of slime, and passed to the central mouth by thousands of microscopic tentacles. Yeah, tentacles. Mm. A sea cucumber stickopus variegate this right, ripples across a shallow coral pool in search of a suitable sand patch. It feeds by shoveling sand into its mouth with tentacles and digesting out any plants or animals. As many as 2,000 cucumbers live in one acre of reef, processing up to 60 tons of sand a year. This is the, a sea cucumber. For some 17 weeks after hatching on a reef island, the masked booby chick is fed whole fish swallowed by the parents at sea and brought back to life to regurgitate. When the dam covered chick begs, one, it is allowed to probe in its parents' throat, two, as the food is regurgitated, the main chick may topple over, three, but with disengaging itself, it swallows the fish in one gulp, four, comes back and begs for more, five. Chick begging for food. Probing for fish. Transfer of food. Fish being swallowed. A plea for more. A flock of suji or wide awake terns approach their nesting area. Such colonies are densely packed and landing requires considerable aerobatic skill. The terns are particularly well equipped for the feet. They are also known as sea swallowers. They have the ike swallows long, deeply forked tails that can be spread and used as both air brake and rudder. This enables them not only to change direction with starting rapidity, but also to stop down in the air before landing. This is the wide awake make turns. This masked booby is at almost streamlined, the feet tucked under the tail and the bill extending contours of the head. Lesser frigate birds use air currents to soar without flapping their wings. The student turn maneuvers with its tail spread. The rail-tailed tropic bird approaches the camera, trailing its long tail feathers devices for display rather than aids to flight. See that? Silver gulls, the only small birds of this type on the Great Barrier Reef, hover above a coral rock before landing. Like most gulls, they have a distinctive method of hovering. They ride on a wind that has been deflected over an obstacle, such as rock or cliff, making constant adjustments to their body shape with movements of their wings and feet. The wings can be swiveled and the feathers spread or closed, and dangling feet can be swung backwards or forwards to alter the center of gravity and so keep balance. Roll the birds. The most notorious enemy of the living reef is the giant crown of thorns, starfish, the sinister mass of venomous grand green and brown spines, those running in these three photographs, spanning up to 28 inches with as many as 23 arms. It strips the polyps from a hard reef building coral, leaving only a lifeless limestone skeleton far right for ground. It shows a marked preference top right for saccharine coral, sometimes bottom right. The starfish itself falls to the victim of a giant triton, which traps it and guts it. Crowns of thorns eating at staghorn coral. White coral skeleton and crown of thorns. Giant triton on crown of thorns.
But calling a global thought, a coral lies shattered on the seabed in the wake of the cyclone. Globophilia is especially fertile because its green holdups create a spear-like skeleton anchored on the two central stem. But all corals are vulnerable to natural destructive forces and their self-repairing ability proved over ten thousands of years offer some hope that their capacity to survive the contemporary threats as well. This is a Labocoria coral. Polyps flowering on Goniopa coral. Spiraling tentacles of a large tube worm. Coral dwelling tube worms feeding on bacteria. Underwater metal of turtle grass. Skeleton of fungia coral. Extending polyps of tuba tustra coral. Bristles of a soft coral. Baby coral with polyps withdrawn. Protracted polyps of tuba stria coral. Crossing on fronds of Cadena seaweed. Extended polyps of Stylophobia mordax coral. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Comment below if you enjoyed this book and join me in my next video where we explore Hawaii.